Okay, things to consider when buying a home, winter edition. This is part two. In part two, we're going to talk about expert insights for today's home buyers. In part one, don't miss that. We talked about what's happening in the housing market. And then there's another video that I've made. It's more in depth, same answer, but more in depth about what's happening in the housing market. If you want to watch those two videos first, you certainly can. But now we're going to talk about expert insights for today's home buyers. Okay, so here we go. Expert insights for today's home buyers. If you want to buy a home today, here are a few things experts say you should know about what to expect and why home ownership is so important. Number one, buyers will continue to see less competition for homes and have more time to tour homes they like and consider their options. You say, Josh, rates are up. You know, we had this huge housing appreciation uh, a year ago. This is not the best time to buy a house. Wait a minute. Maybe it is the absolute best time to buy a house because now that they had, we had the appreciation and things go up and then they don't crash back down in the housing market. What happens instead is they, you know, you go up and then you tick down a little bit and you go up and you tick down a little bit, but you're always keeping a lot of that game. People in 2022, for the most part, did have a housing gain. They had appreciation in 2022. And I'm pretty sure we're going to have a low level of appreciation in 2023. But remember, low levels of appreciation on your largest asset, your largest investment, that's a pretty good place to have your appreciation. While mortgage rates are expected to continue to drift higher over the coming months, much of the rapid increase in rates is likely behind us. Okay, so the Fed is going to make more increases, but they're going to be smaller. And remember that the that between the Feds, there's there's a bigger margin right now. Rates are higher than they should be in comparison to what we're really dealing with. I think what's happened is a lot of the rate makers have uh, kind of looked ahead and they are holding their rates a little higher. So even though the Fed's going to have these small rate hikes coming, I don't know that we'll see the interest rate actually rise in the coming days. In fact, I think we have already hit the top of the interest rates. We've come down a little bit and now we're going to level off for a while. I think we're looking at interest rates that we're going to have for a good period of time. I'm guessing at least three to six months. The key to making a good decision in this challenging housing market is to be laser focused on what you need now and in the years ahead so that you can stay in your home long enough that buying is a sound financial decision. You say, Josh, could I mess up in buying a house? Yeah, you could mess up in buying a house if you buy in Charlotte today and three months from now you need to be in New Jersey. Yeah, that would be a mistake. If you're not sure that you're going to be in this area for long enough um, to own this house and to start looking at enough appreciation to cover your purchase costs, I mean, your, you know, the cost of making a move, making a purchase, then yeah, it might not be the best time to buy. But if you're in the right area, you're going to be in and you plan to be in this home for at least two or three years, then yeah, I think it's still a great time to buy. Remember, the best time to buy is yesterday. The second best time to buy is today. And any time that you've missed some of that appreciation or you've missed some of that time to pay down your mortgage balance, I think any time in the future is not as, a, not as good of a time as now. Home ownership is still considered one of the most reliable ways to build wealth. When you make monthly mortgage payments, you're building equity in your home. When you rent, you aren't investing in your financial future the same way you are when you're paying off a mortgage. Let me make this very clear. When you rent, you are absolutely investing in the financial future. But it's not yours. It's your landlord's. Your landlord is very, very thankful every time you make a rental payment because when you rent, you're paying all, you're, you're building equity for he or she. So that landlady, that landlord is making money every time you rent. And the question you have to ask yourself with your biggest monthly expense, do you want it to go into your equity or into your landlord's? Uh, three trends that are good news for home buyers. Number one, there's more homes to choose from. Because the market's cooled just a little bit, some of the intensity buyers faced during the peak frenzy of the pandemic has cooled too. 
Here are a few trends. So more homes to choose from. During the pandemic, housing supply hit a record low. At the same time, buyer demand skyrocketed. This, com this combination made it difficult to find a home because there just weren't enough homes available for sale to meet the buyer demand. According to Realtor.com, the supply of homes for sale has increased by 46.8% compared to 2021. Wow, I would not have guessed it's that much. While the supply is still lower than more normal years, you do have more to choose from in your home search today. That makes finding your dream a dream home a bit less difficult. The building wars have eased. Now there are still building bidding wars. If you want to live in um, in the right neighborhood or in a specific neighborhood, and you want to live in you know in the right location or this this perfect location, you're probably still gonna. You could still face some bidding wars, but they're not as often. Uh, one of the top stories in real estate headlines over the past two years was the intensity and frequency of bidding wars. But today, things are different. With more options, you'll be also you'll also likely let see less competition from other buyers looking for homes. Um, according to the National Association of Realtors, the average number of offers on recently sold homes has declined. In October of 2022, the average was 2.4 offers per sale. In contrast, in October 21, the average was 3.7. So, see, it's not a huge difference. They're still getting these. They're still getting these offers, but they're just not not as many as there were. If you tried to buy a house over the past two years, you probably experienced the bidding war frenzy firsthand, and you may have been outbid on several homes along the way. Now you have a chance to jump back into the market and enjoy some enjoy searching for a home with less competition. Okay, number three, there's more room to negotiate. When you have less competition, you also have more negotiating powers about buyer. During the frenzy of the last few years, more buyers were willing to skip important steps in the home buying process like appraisal or inspection to try and win a bidding war. But National Association of Realtors shows the percentage of buyers waiving the, those contingencies is down year over year. As a buyer, this is good news. The appraisal and the inspection give you important information about the value and condition of the home you're buying. And if something turns up in the inspection, you have more power today to renegotiate with the seller. As a survey from Realtor.com confirms more sellers are accepting offers that include contingencies. According to that report, 95% of sellers said buyers requested a home inspection and 67% negotiated with buyers on repairs as a result of the findings. That's a, that's a high number. Um, let me also say that if you are an FHA customer and you're wanting to buy with an FHA 3.5% down loan or you want to buy conventional with a low down payment like 3% down or you want to buy a house and you don't have any down payment money and you want to go USDA, this is also a time that, buy, that sellers are more willing to look at those offers. Uh, bottom line, while buyers still face challenges today, they're not necessarily the same ones you may have been up against a year or so ago. If you've been outbid or had trouble finding a home in the past, now may be the mo moment you've been waiting for. Let's connect to start the home buying process. All right, I'm Josh with Churchill Mortgage. Oops. And uh, and there is my um, there's my licensing and all that information for you and uh, would love to talk to you. You can reach out to me. You can schedule an appointment with me at talktojosh.net or you can call me at 828-238-2682. Would love to talk to you and get you moved on to the next step. You say, Josh, should I call a realtor first? No, call me first. I want to talk to you, understand your situation, look at your um, your what you can buy, how well you know what kind of price range you're in. Get you all lined up, get your loan all ready, and then I want to pick up the phone and call a real estate uh, professional and say, "Hey, this person's ready to roll. Here's here's a uh, connection for you. If you have a realtor already in mind, then that's fine. But uh, I'd love to connect you with a realtor that I that I know and trust and can help you get this rolling."